I didn't think I would actually tell the difference in normal driving, but I do. It's kind of hard to believe that a cherry brand was introduced into Malaysia just last year. I think as of right now, they have more than 50 dealers, maybe more. They've already said in the beginning, Now, our operation is small, but there's a lot of potential for aggressive expansion. And the newest model to hit their showrooms is this, the Tiggo 7 Pro, the fourth model in their whole lineup of the Amora 5, Amora E5, and Tiggo 8 Pro. Sorry for being Captain Obvious here, but it's obviously going for the same slice as the Proton X70, blatantly, like it's trying to flirt really, really hard to woo the same buyer, which is, you know, all of us. To the Proton, the Cherry is like her new friend that she told you not to worry about. And to the Cherry, the Proton is like a longtime boyfriend that she tells you is cool with you two hanging out and that you guys should totally meet because, well, you guys are so much alike. You'll have so much in common, a bromance in the making. Oh my God. This shouldn't be awkward at all. My name is Jim, this is Carlist. And um, yeah, we'll be right back after these messages. Well, what do we have here? Another SUV. This one tends to be a bit more of a home wrecker disrupting our enduring love affair with a certain other model we've been involved with since 2018. It's even the same size, and that's what she said. Anyway, they literally share identical measurements, like a wheelbase of 2,670 millimeters, though the Tico 7 Pro is 31 millimeters wider in terms of height and overall length, though only single digit millimeters separate them. The big difference though is the price. Kind of, okay, because the X70 starts at 99,000 ringgit. And at the top of the pile, you have this, the Premium X for 127,000 ringgit. But that's exactly where the Cherry Tico 7 Pro has focused all its efforts. One spec, one variant, highly specified and equipped at 124,000 ringgit. So a little bit less. Will that 3K difference move the needle in terms of buyers? When it was launched, it certainly had a few obvious tech and equipment advantages to go with that more competitive price. But shortly after, Proton truck back with a pretty significant update to the X70, which did quite a lot to level the playing field once again. It turns out that Cherry won't have quite as easy as a time taking out the X70 as it first thought. Well, come on, hurry up, Jim. Get to the point. Which car is better, the X70 or the new kid on the block? Overall, the Tico 7 Pro does look pretty decent, though I don't think its front end is its best angle. It just seems too plain and generic, though I do appreciate Cherry's adding some flair with the sequential turn signals and diamond embedded grille pattern, the LED DRLs nearer to where I expect the front fog lamps in this blue stripe pattern though, I am not so sure it does the car many favors. On first impressions, especially if you rock up to its front end, I think the new X70 does make a more positive impact. It looks classier and does have more of a presence, which is mostly down to that recent facelift. At the rear though, I do think the Cherry does a better job here because I think the Cherry's best angle is probably from the rear. It does a much better job with its full width light bar. It looks more integrated, more together. Although both the X70 and the Tiggo 7 Pro suffer from a thing called imposter exhaust syndrome. This is serious guys. This is an affliction affecting a lot of modern cars these days. I see it everywhere and it's gonna get worse. There's also a big difference in terms of ground clearance, 175 millimeters versus the X70's 200 millimeters. And if you notice, the Proton has 19-inch wheels compared to the Jerry's more modest 18-inch wheels. So, up to you now. You want to be more baller with your bigger wheels or save money when time comes to change tires? I know 19-inch tires are not cheap, bro. But at least Proton does a better job of factory fitment because this comes with Continental Ultra Contact UC6 tires versus these ones from Atlas, Atlas A51. You know what, what's the point of opening the bonnet? Because all I see, and see with the Proton 2, is a bunch of plastic, all engine cover. There's no mechanical gubbins to be actually enjoyed or spied at under the bonnet. But it's the same story with the Proton and the Cherry. And in fact, every other C-segment SUV out there, a small capacity turbocharged petrol engine hooked up to the front wheels. Standard stuff. Hey, but actually the current CRV does have an all wheel drive variant and the previous pre-facelift X70 did have an all-wheel drive variant. But right now, right now, front-wheel drive makes up the majority of all the preferences for buyers and yeah. If you can believe it, there's a 1.6 liter turbo under here producing 194 PS and 219 Newton meters of torque, hence the badge at the rear. For the Proton, it's got a 1.5 liter turbo petrol with 177 PS and 255 Newton meters, an engine that's quickly becoming the standard staple of the Proton lineup. 
in either MPI or TGDI form. Like the Tiggo 7, it has a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that drives, you guessed it, the front wheels. The first thing about the Tiggo 7 is that when you step into it after unlocking it for the first time after a while, it plays this long, drawn-out startup boot chime music animation on screen, just like the M105, which is fine in the showroom, but it can get it just wears off after a while, especially if you're you know coming in in the morning to rush to work. You can't be bothered to look at all this animation stuff. And the thing is, this car has this proximity key feature, which is, you know, very nice. It's got the keyless entry and everything, but it also has proximity for walking away and coming toward the car. So you walk up to the car, it unlocks, basically. You walk away from the car, it detects the key is no longer in range, it'll lock the car. And the reason I mention it is because this feature has just been added to the Proton. It's one of those features that they advertise for the facelift. It's called like proximity walk away locking or whatever, which is something that the Cherry already had. One thing that does become quite evident is that the value for money that you're getting with the Tiggo 7 Pro is pretty impressive. Anybody who stepped into a Tiggo 8 Pro will definitely recognize this whole dashboard visual thing. And I know that when I did step into the Tiggo 8 Pro for the first time, I was pretty impressed. For 124K, this is a remarkably well-presenting interior. They've done a really great job in terms of actually condensing all the best aspects and the fit and finish and the general impressive qualities of the Tiggo 8 Pro's interior into the Tiggo 7. Then you have the most distinctive feature, which is the 24.6-inch dual 12.3-inch displays for the infotainment and the meter cluster over here, running the proprietary Cherry interface, which pretty much works as you expect it to. The screens themselves are bright, they're vibrant. But to be honest, for me, what I would do immediately is just plug in, you know, either from a wire or wirelessly, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and just forget about it. And once you have set up your audio, you'll find that the speakers on this thing also trump the X70s because they have an eight speaker array from Sony. And Sony isn't a slouch in the audio space. They, do, they make really, really good stuff. Elsewhere though, in terms of quality and materials and fit and finish itself, I can't really complain because you really have to dig down to the depths to find anything resembling hard plastics. But where your hands can actually reach, Everything is soft. Soft touch over here where your hands might not even ever touch. Soft over here, this leatherette material over here as well. Look at the build quality over here. It doesn't really have to shake very much. It has a nice satinized finish, soft touch material. Steering wheel itself also quite nice to feel. On the door panel, look, very soft touch material, soft touch, soft touch, and even down below here, it is not the worst thing in the world. It still feels pretty okay. Open this up. And even this, which I complained about in the CRV, it wobbled a bit too much, is nice and sturdy over here as well. I can't really complain about the build quality. If you are wondering about the Cherry Tico 7 and how the quality is, I don't think you have to worry. If you're benchmarking this against the X70, it's about on par. Yes, yes, for the cup holders, very easily done. The door pocket. Yes, it does fit. In fact, this door pocket too, it is almost full length. It can fit some long items in there, very nice. And the center cubby is very spacious, very deep, very commodious. It isn't lined with anything too soft, except for the bottom over here. But the nice thing is that it is also cool. So all the cool air going for the rear passengers gets piped in through a little vent over here, keeps your soft drinks or whatever you have nice and chill. And two USB slots, one for USB-A, one for USB-C and two more USB slots in the back for the rear passengers. As the front seat, these seats are pretty comfortable. I could use more thigh support. It's quite flat and the floor is a little bit high. So you have a gap between my thighs and the seats itself. Besides that, I have no real complaints about the seats. It's nice, We've got some bolstering to keep you in place. And in the middle, you have just two cup holders. Will it fit a little big bottle? Yes! In the middle, you have one single USB port over here. Little storage area, which is lined with rubber, so you can fit your phone in there. It wouldn't scratch it too much, although it isn't very deep. I am 165cm, so maybe not the best test for headroom, but I think if you're over six foot, no issues whatsoever. And the floor, look at this. This is almost EV levels of flat floor. So even if you have to sit down in the middle over here, you can not have to share space with the people sitting next to you. Nice. In here, no noise, little fuss. You just kind of get in the car and go. 
there's no boot up chime there's no funny noises anywhere there's no beeps and bongs and in fact the cherry what it does is that it won't let you move off unless you put on your seat belt so let's say you know what i'm in the sun i want to move into the shade it wants me to put on my seat belt just to move a couple of meters why that's just that's just a lot more complexity than there has to be first of all i think this feels like a higher quality cabin i'm not sure what it is and i can't believe i'm saying that about a proton maybe this is due to the napa leather maybe the fact that this engine for some reason it's quieter it is less juddery even at idle there's just a sense maybe it's the layout but there's just a sense of this car being a more expensive car than the tigo 7 even though it is about the same price to be honest or maybe it's the fact that there's a lot less glossy surfaces in this car compared to the cherry because the glossy surface just gives it a less premium vibe especially after a while you get fingerprints on it you get dirt and dust it just doesn't look as refined you know it doesn't look as expensive and that's why i don't really particularly like this kind of led ambient lighting solution strip that they've done for the dashboard it just makes it look a little bit more chintzy now if that's a turn off what a turn on is is vented seats because i can't tell you how much this makes a difference in feeling more premium than it actually is especially in a hot country like malaysia and choose from one two or three settings for the vented seat blower itself and it does feel so good to have in the rear seats over the cherry well of course you have the panoramic sunroof and i blame the x70 for introducing this whole panoramic sunroof expectation to the Malaysian market because every car these days if don't that a sunroof then it's a it's a bad thing when I don't really need the feature in fact if you're going for the X70 I say save the 3000 ringgit and get the 123,000 ringgit version of the X70 which is the exact same price now as the Cherry so any advantage in price you will negate if you can sacrifice the sunroof I gotta say this is a more comfortable experience for one thing look i have proper thigh support because the floor is at a certain height which lifts my knees up a certain height and that is supported entirely by the cushioning of this seat and again you have this napa leather which feels good as well you pull down armrest the armrest has nice finishing on it it's not just a couple of holes over here for the cup holders they do fit no, they don't fit actually. Talking about practicality, I think the Cherry kind of wins out over here because it does have the smaller boot, but hear me out, okay? The smaller boot, which is also a flat loading floor at 475 liters with the seats up. But the thing is, these seats can also fold down to reveal 1,672 liters. And I'll tell you why that's important in a minute, okay? Besides that, you get little hooks over here on either side and a 12 volt power outlet. So, you know, it can power little things up as well. And importantly, once you do get everything out from your nice flat load floor, you open this up to reveal a full size spare wheel. On the other hand, the X70 does have the bigger boot with all seats up at 515 liters. Of course, both have power boots. And in fact, the X70 has this feature where you just kind of sit around with the car key with you behind the car and just detect that you want to have the boot open. You don't have to kick your feet under at all. Okay, Cherry Tigo 7 Pro, 0 to 108.3 seconds officially, 190 something PS, 219 Newton meters of torque, sport mode on and go. Okay, 8.57 seconds. Not bad. Almost there for the claim figures. Now for the Proton X70, 177 PS, 255 Newton meters. Z200 should take about 9.5 seconds, not as fast as the Cherry. Sport mode on, foot to the floor. Doesn't feel as quick off the line. Definitely smoother though. Come on. 10.51 seconds. To no surprise, we've proven that the X70, which has less power and torque, is less quick off the line as the Cherry Tico 7 Pro. Okay, but there are other things, more important things to ascertain about the Cherry and how it sits in the market, because this is the benchmark. The Proton X70 
has kind of like held the hearts of Malaysians since its launch, what, like six years ago, something like that? So it's newly refreshed for 2025. But the thing is, the powertrain and all the little refinements that happened along those years have really been kind of like polished and refined. This is a very refined experience, to be honest. And that's the thing I come away with the most. The car is refined. The gearbox is more refined. The ride is more refined. It is comfortable. The handling is sharper. You get a sense that you're in a more substantial vehicle and you have more confidence on the road. I want to say that you don't have those qualities in the Cherry, but you have them in more abundance, I guess, in the Proton, which is a weird thing to say when you attach it to a Proton, but this car feels like a more expensive car. They haven't really quite done everything they can, you know, the wind noise at high speeds still exists. But let me just go through some smaller roads and smaller bumps and tell you how much this car delivers in terms of comfort. Usually when you have a comfortable car, it comes at the expense of handling. It's a little bit floaty. You have that, but it's balanced in this car. Maybe Proton and their, you know, handling know-how has massaged it. So braking right now, one of those really sharp bumps on the road. You see, it is solid, okay? That wasn't uncomfortable. It wasn't uncomfortable. It was, it was definitely an impact, but it didn't upset the car. You get the feeling that this car has been tested in Malaysia and run through the rigors, you know? Everyone kind of like buying this car liking it, giving feedback, and Malaysians are not shy about giving feedback. But you can tell all that feedback has been listened to and actioned upon by Proton because what do we like about the X70? The comfort. We like cars, we like Proton cars to handle well. I would say this car is one of the best handling, if not the best handling that you can get for the money of this size. You don't get that uh, over eagerness, you know, in first gear when you just pull off the line. You feed it gas, you feed it gas. What you should do is just kind of like let the car catch up to you and they can gracefully kind of pull away. If you give it more gas than it wants to have or wants to take, it'll just kind of like get off the line a little bit too abruptly, maybe even lead to some wheel spin if you're on a slippery surface or going uphill and on a slippery surface. In the Cherry, it gets off the line more smoothly. But once you get off the line though, this Proton is very smooth. Those first three gears especially are spaced very closely. So before you know it, you're in third gear and a very low RPM. It just gets, gives you a sense that you're in a more refined car because the engine isn't working as hard. You're up to speed, the revs are low, and it kind of like settles into its boost and pulls you along without the engine feeling like it's under load. Overall, the X70 is a very accomplished car. The six years it has spent in Malaysia, you can feel it. You can feel, you can feel the car being tested by all of you guys and all of your feedback being listened to and applied in this car it's a hard thing to beat cherry has done very well like i said to actually present this car as a kind of like compressed reduced version of the cherry tigo 8 pro i was very impressed with the tigo 8 pro but the thing is you have now a more powerful car if that matters to you this car does have more power than any other C-segment SUV on the market, okay? Anything with the internal combustion engine only. So you have 194, 190, yeah, 194 PS and 290 Newton meters of torque. That is more than the X70, that is more than a CRV, okay? And does it feel that way though? I don't think so. I don't think in normal driving you can tell a difference between all those cars because they have different characteristics because yeah, you have more maximum power over here, but you have more gears and a more closely spaced ratio in the X70. In this car, it is tend to hanging on. It is, has a more tall second and third gear, and first gear for that matter. So you're hanging on to the gear ratios a little bit more than you would want to. But that does make for better acceleration. You're not having to shift up a few gears to reach, you know, like 100 or highway speeds but it isn't, you sacrifice refinement for that. Quite a bit of engine noise, actually. Road noise is well taken care of. 
although there is some judder and I think that's coming from these Atlas tires yeah you know what the Proton does give you premium tires literally it's called the Continental Ultra Contact UC6 those are not cheap tires quite a lot of understeer right there yeah you know what it does remind me a lot of the JQ J7 because it's the exact same car there is a bit more ambient noise and just noise coming from the firewall from the engine bay into the cabin and some juddering 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 under braking hmm what is that about you do get nice oh a lot of under here a lot of you get nice double glazing on the front windows so it should help with ambient noise intrusion in the cabin but mm, I think I was I was in a more quiet cabin in the X70 there might not be a lot of wind noise whistle coming from the side mirrors but there's more wind noise overall in the cherry so again it does add to that you know more expensive isolated cabin feeling in the X70 it's pretty remarkable what you get for your money because 124,000 ringgit gets you all this stuff and make no mistake the Cherry Tico 7 is a better specified car if you look at the on-paper specs for this car and the X70 even in premium X trim okay you get more with the Tico 7 the cameras are better and the thing is you have to split hairs when it comes to these things do they actually impact you are the specs just there to kind of pad things out and have the perceived value add over the X70 let's say that has maybe fewer specs but none of which will actually impact you on a daily basis so for example okay you have ADAS level 2.5 in the Cherry which also includes a more robust lane keep assist system so you can actually you know at certain intervals take your hands off the wheel and the car will actually corner for you and it works and it works pretty well something that you can't do as reliably as often in the Proton it does have the intelligent cruise control function but it's not as robust it'll chime in to, to kind of force you to take the wheel to make the adjustment yourself manually it is a worthy contender a worthy worthy contender to the Proton X70 okay and it clearly is gunning after that I'm not sure if Cherry is actually planning to kind of pad out their range of the Tiggo 7 Pro with more variants to attack the X70 at more price points I, I really doubt it because the Amoda 5 and the Cherry Tiggo 8 Pro all come in one spec which is very high spec and they price it very competitively for whatever reason if you don't like the Proton X70 I get it okay and you can't go wrong if you walk into a Cherry showroom and are impressed by the Tiggo 7 Pro it gives you everything that you would want and those things that I prefer about the Proton might be things that you don't prefer might be things that you find the Certico 7 does better and I can't disagree with you on that okay that's why I say they're really quite evenly matched anything that I say is based on preference anything I say is subjective if I prefer the Tigo 7 or the X70 over each other that is a preference call that is a subjective call honestly in my opinion is that if this car launched a few months before the X70 facelift this car would be clearly the hands-down winner it has features that the previous 2024 or 23 X70 couldn't compete with and would just kind of like dominate the market at least for a while and then Proton would have to kind of like step up the game and the other thing I would say to Cherry to kind of make things more evenly matched is the tires okay the Atlas A51s are not up to snuff when Proton Proton is offering premium ultra contact tires okay Continentals on their car and you basically offer a a bang-up competitor that is held back by Atlas A51 tires and I didn't think I would actually tell the difference in normal driving but I do driving back to back the car does feel more planted more secure you have access to more traction in the moment in the Proton and that could be done to the handling but I suspect at least a little bit of it comes down 
to the tires because there is a little bit of a floaty light sensation with the Cherry Tigo 7. And yeah, I do think it's the tires. Under braking, you do feel that judder, you know? When you're under hard cornering, maybe even slightly loose surface, you can tell that this car is more readily understeering. You just can't ignore the fact that you get Continental Ultra Contact 6 UC6 tires in the X70. And that is, that's a big deal, man. Especially when you're in a family car, the tires is literally where the rubber meets the road. You want to have the best protection and the best reassurance possible. And I just, I just don't feel reassured with the Atlas A51 tires. At the core of it, both these cars offer a lot of value for money, a lot of features that you couldn't think about getting 10 years ago in a car. This much, this much on paper features, it boggles the mind how much of a family car you can get, how much of an advanced family car you can get for the money these days. It's kind of crazy. If it was my money, to be honest, I would actually go partial with the Proton because it just kind of fits my preferences. I like the way it drives better. I like the fact that it's more comfortable, more refined. Nothing against the Cherry Tico 7 though. This is a great car for the money. I would actually go for the premium, the sunroofless version of the X70 because I save about 3,000 ringgit, effectively negating the price advantage that the Cherry has. So there you have it. If you like the Cherry, that's good. The X70, look, it's a Malaysian favorite for a reason. And thank you so much for watching this video up to this point. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. Leave us your thoughts. Do you own an X70? Do you own a Tiggo 7 Pro? Would you want to buy one over the X70 or vice versa? Let us know. Thank you for watching again. And I've been Jim. See you on the next one.